When you think of a smart home, what comes to mind? Chances are you think of lights turning on and off and changing colors, locks that auto lock themselves, or robot vacuums driving around the house. But these devices are not what makes a home smart. A truly smart home is powered by automations and to have killer automations, you need sensors. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know about smart home sensors, including over a dozen different types of sensors, what they do, how to use them in your smart home, and some tips to remember. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. Let's dive right into 13 types of smart home sensors that I use in my smart home, starting with a motion sensor. Motion sensors typically use a technology called passive infrared, or PIR, to detect when someone or something enters a field of view. A standalone motion sensor can normally be identified by sort of a white ball protruding from its surface. Or you may have motion detection included in another smart home device, like in a security camera. I am using motion sensors from Philips Hue, Everything Presence One, and Unify cameras. Motion sensors are great for knowing when someone enters a space, like a room, for turning on lights. But they're not so good for knowing if someone continues to occupy a room. For that, you'll want a presence detection sensor, which uses a technology called millimeter wave. With millimeter wave, you can detect people and objects, whether they are moving or relatively stationary within the detection area. PIR motion sensors can tell you when someone is up and moving, but not if they're sitting down on a couch watching TV or asleep in bed. You need millimeter wave to detect those subtle movements from someone fidgeting in their seat or even breathing. For this reason, a presence detection sensor with millimeter wave is ideal for turning off the lights because it knows with confidence that no one remains in that space. With a motion sensor, chances are you'll have the lights turned off on you when you don't want them to. It was this frustration that led me to millimeter wave and the everything presence one. But the application of presence detection goes way beyond automating your lights. You can know when everybody has left the home, even if they don't own a mobile device, and do things like arm your alarm system or adjust the heating or cooling automatically. Now, if you are interested in automating your lights, you'll probably want a brightness sensor, also called a luminance. This detects the level of light in a space, basically how bright or how dark it is. By knowing the light level inside or outside, you can ensure your automation only turns on the lights when you actually need that extra light. Scheduling light automations based on time of day is not as reliable or convenient since it may get darker earlier than expected one day due to cloudy weather, or it may be brighter later in the day during daylight savings time. It is not uncommon to find a brightness sensor combined with another sensor like a temperature sensor. Like the name implies, this sensor tells you the current temperature of the space around it. You could use this in an automation to run the heating or cooling based on a target room in your home. Or you might just like knowing what the temperature is in every room of your house. If your house is anything like mine with a single HVAC system, the temperature may vary by 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit from the basement to the upper level of the home. I literally have to dress differently for my day depending on which floor I'm going to spend the most time on. Wearing a robe while I'm in the basement working and then changing to short sleeves and shorts when going to bed on the top floor. One thing to remember about temperature sensors is they are not all equal. If you put two temperature sensors in the same room from two different brands, they will give you two different temperatures. And chances are neither one of them will agree with the temperature on your thermostat. Depending on your personality type, this variance may drive you crazy. But if you use Home Assistant for your smart home platform like I do, there are ways to add offsets to dial things into your liking 
If these differences keep you up at night, you know who you are. Another sensor that may get combined with brightness and temperature is a humidity sensor. These tell you the percent humidity level in the immediate area. One way to use this is in a bathroom. If you have a smart exhaust fan, you can tell it to turn on and off based on the humidity level from taking a shower. Otherwise, you could open up a window to let the steam out, and for that, you might want a contact sensor. Contact sensors are typically placed on a window or door to communicate if they are in an open or closed state. These sensors usually come in two separate pieces with a magnetic piece on one side and the sensor body on the other. When the magnetic field breaks, it flips a switch in the sensor. I have ring contact sensors on every exterior door and window in my house, and even some interior doors. When combined with motion sensors, these are perfect for a home alarm system. But I also use them to pause our heating and cooling when a door or window is opened, and to turn on the lights when a door is open to a windowless room or to the outside porch at night. For automating certain appliances, you may want to consider a vibration sensor. These can detect subtle changes in the movement of a stationary object, like when a laundry room dryer or kitchen dishwasher is running. I use these to send a notification to our phones when the dryer is done based on the start and stop of the machine vibrating. Alternatively, you could consider a moving or tilt sensor, which may be combined with a vibration sensor. These can detect when an object is moving around or when its X and Y axis is tilting. You could use it to know the state of your garage door, for example. The AOTech SmartThings multi-purpose sensor combines vibration, moving, tilt, contact, and temperature sensors in one powerful little device. If you want to automate your home based on if an electronic device is currently in use, or if you're just curious about your energy consumption, then you might want an energy sensor. These come in a few varieties, including smart plugs with energy monitoring, CCT clamps on your main electrical panel or solar inverters, among others. You can use a smart plug with energy monitoring, like the TP-Link CASA ones that I have, to determine if your TV is on or off for automating lights, or to know if your washing machine is done to alert you, or to turn off power to a phone charger when your device's battery reaches 80%. In addition, you can install CCT clamps like the Emporia View that I'm using on your electrical panel to know the energy consumption of each individual breaker or appliance. And if you have solar panels like we do, you can measure the solar energy production on your home using a connected solar inverter. When combined with smart plugs with energy monitoring and CCT clamps, you can track both the energy production and consumption in your home. I probably get too excited about data like this. If you track your energy usage, you may also want to track your water usage with some type of water sensor. Now, this one's a bit of a twist because they come in at least two distinct varieties. And at the time of recording, I am only in possession of one of them. However, I have pre-ordered a sensor on Kickstarter that I'm really excited about for tracking water consumption. I'll do a video review once I get my hands on it, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out when I drop that video. While I may not be able to track water consumption at the moment, I can track water leaks. For most use cases, this is one of those sensors that you really never want to see activated. Nobody wants a water leak in a home unless you're the wet bandits. Harry, it's our calling card. Calling All the great ones leave their mark. We're the wet bandits. But when water is leaking, you want to know about it immediately so you can take action and possibly prevent costly damage to your home. Fortunately or unfortunately, a water leak sensor has come in handy for me several times. We had water leaking from a pipe that this device picked up, and even worse, our basement started flooding during heavy rains. Each time, the water leak sensor alerted me. Since I'm using a ring water leak sensor that's integrated with our alarm system, I get a phone call the moment water is detected, which for some reason only happens between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. 
Why is that? Related, but different, is a water heater sensor. You can use this to determine the tank level and water temperature of your home's water heater. This way, you can ensure you always have enough hot water, especially when guests are over and the shower is getting more used than normal. With the Aquanta water heater sensor, I can put the water heater into away mode to save energy when we're traveling or give it a quick boost for an extra shower. If you have allergies or a respiratory illness, live in an area that gets wildfires, or are just concerned about the air quality of your home and how it may be impacted by things like cooking habits, then you may want an air quality sensor. These can measure things like the level of CO2 and VOCs to give you an AQI for the indoor air in your home. I actually had this device but stopped using it because it just wasn't as useful for us. Thankfully, no one in our home has a bad allergy or respiratory condition and we're generally not exposed to smoke from wildfires. However, for those that are, you could use this sensor to automate turning on a fan for improved air circulation. And finally, you could have a collection of sensors to let you know what's happening with the outdoor air and conditions, such as a personal weather system like Tempest. This may include sensors for temperature, humidity, brightness, rain, wind, lightning, among others. But it's not just about knowing the weather. Your smartphone has a built-in app for that already. Rather, it's about opening up new home automation possibilities, like turning on the outdoor lights when it's actually dark outside, regardless of the time of day, or telling your in-ground irrigation system or sprinklers not to run because it recently rained. If you're just starting out with smart home sensors, here are some tips to keep in mind. Remember the power of sensor combinations. This has two parts to it. Number one is that many smart home sensors often come bundled together in a single device. In my smart home, the Everything Presence One sensor includes motion, presence detection, brightness, temperature, and humidity sensors all in one. Likewise, the Philips Hue motion sensor not only detects motion, but also brightness and temperature. Number two is that some sensors just work great together. For example, pairing motion and presence detection to turn on the lights using PIR motion and to turn off the lights using millimeter wave. Or you may use multiple motion sensors in a larger room where any one of them can start an automation. This can help reduce lag in triggering your automations. Think about how multiple sensors can work together to give you the ideal home automation. Separately, remember that not all sensors are powered the same way. They may use batteries, plug into a power outlet, or be hardwired into a power over ethernet or PoE plus cable. If you're looking for a sensor that has multiple options for power, Consider what will work best for your home environment. I am using a combination of all of these in my smart home. While replacing or charging batteries may sound bad, many of the battery powered sensors in my home have been running continuously for over four years without ever needing to change the batteries like all of my door and window sensors. Sensor battery life depends on how often a sensor is triggered and what type of smart home protocol the sensor is using. A sensor using Zigbee will consume less power than a sensor using Wi-Fi. Given how loose you are with the definition of a sensor, there are potentially even more sensor types that could be added to this list. For example, object identification, such as animal, person, package, or vehicle detection in a smart camera, or a sensor to measure the amount of natural gas that you use for heating and cooking. But hopefully the list I presented gave you an idea of the smart home sensor spectrum. Let me know in the comments what the must have sensors are for your smart home or any creative ways that you are using sensors. If you're interested in taking the next step with sensors but aren't sure where to even begin with your smart home, you'll wanna check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Let's just check the weather for the day here.
Oh, yep, yeah, that's going to be robe weather.